हाँ जी वाहिरु जी का खालसा वाहिरु जी की पते जी आए नो सारे अनु वेलकम टुडे वी आर ऑन सेट कोस्ट क्लास नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड वी आर गोइंग टू बिगिन विद पॉडी फोर्टी वन ऑफ सेट कोस्ट दिस इज़ द फर्स्ट वर्स ऑफ पॉडी फोर्टी वन इनकारनेशन Uh, entered for the Gurmukh. So you can see that uh, this translation is problematic uh, for a number of reasons, and we can look at three main reasons. So number one, when you start to translate as our jam, as comings and goings, it doesn't help us understand the philosophy of it and the principle of it. It doesn't add any value to what we know. So somebody asks you what the meaning of our jan say coming and going. Somebody asks you what's the meaning of coming and going. Per you that one. Really, you understand nothing. You're just simply using, you know, different words. Now this is spirituality. Spirituality. These words must be given spiritual meanings. Those spiritual meanings are the ones that will add value to our spiritual life, to our spiritual journey. To our spiritual understanding and our spiritual goals and objectives. Otherwise, this thing, this thing, just like this, does not add value. So that's literal, yeah. We want to come out of literal translations and go into spiritual translation. Then the word reincarnation. Reincarnation is not mentioned anywhere in this verse. It is simply being transported into the verse uh, because the translator is either mistaken or the translator believes that. That's exactly what the guru is talking about. And coming and going in the incarnation are entered for the guru. Uh, this is mistranslation. If you look uh, very carefully, the kaka of uh, guru has a sehari. If it's the guru, then it should not have a sehari, but it should have an omkar. Under the kaka to denote it is a noun, a masculine noun, or at the very least a singular masculine noun. So uh, let's look at the words one by one. Gurmuk with the sehari translates as from the guru's book. That means from the guru's mind. What we have from the Guru's mind are messages, spiritual messages. Why are these messages located? They are located within the shadow. So that means Guru Bhagwan transmits as messages within the shadow. Now, once you have a spirituality that is decided, directed, operated, and determined by the messages of the shadow, that spirituality then becomes called labeled. Term as the spirituality of the shabd. See, that's how the whole thing translates down the way to make it meaningful to us and to add value to our understanding of the words. Sanjeev, what? Sanjeev, a lot of the Pandits always will say that the Guru from the mouth of the Guru. Yeah. You mentioned the mind. Correct. So, so that goes deeper. The mouth is on the surface. Mind is. Uh, not only that, the mouth requires a physical presence. The physical presence of the guru is not available. Secondly, the gurus were never about physical. It was always the message behind what they said and what they wrote and what they preached. It was the message. That is why the physical of Nanak was never the guru. It's way you have added the word guru Nanak. The gurus never added the word guru to their physical selves. This is our issue. So when you ask Nanak who is your guru and Angad who is your guru, and they said no, Nanak is not the guru, Angad is not the guru. 
the Guru is the Shaman. And we will come across those verses uh, in our discussion, this course today. So, Gurmukh, which is Sehari, always translates in you know, a couple of steps down the line to spirituality of the Shaman. Now, a Chuke basically is to add something or to eliminate. We use that idiom. The Saab Chukata is eliminated or ended uh, the accounts. Our Jan, of course, literally refers to the coming and the going. So no doubt about that. But then we are talking about spirituality. So what exactly is coming and going in spirituality? Now, when you take it into reincarnation, you are then stepping out of the realms of Sikh spirituality. You are stepping out of the realms of Gurmat spirituality. You are stepping squarely into the realm of the clergy spirituality, of the Brahmin created myth that there is a cycle that goes on after life. Now, Sikhi, Bani, Gurmat does not concern itself with all those because it has got it has no value. There is nothing we can do about that. We don't even know whether that exists. If it does exist or doesn't exist, there's nothing exactly we can do about it. But we can do a lot about what happens to us in this life. So therefore the concern is with the cycle of spirituality. I want to spend some time to develop this concept of, of, of our jhan. Now this is a verse that we find on page 524 of Sri Guru that uses the word avarjan and explains it very well what is understood by this concept of avarjan Sukh Sahaj Anand Uthe Tet Karam Sukh, we know what it is Sahaj is a state of the mind that results from Sukh, bliss and joy and bliss and joy then translate the spiritual sense to Ananda where is that another located? Where is the Sukh and where is the Sach located? That's the Karam. Karam, if you have been attending these classes regularly, you know that in Gurbani, Karam is defined as the mind. So these states of the mind are located, created, and exist within the mind. That's the Karam. Our Jan Rahe Janmana Taha Mar. Rahe means Renigya. It doesn't exist anymore. Janamana Taha Mar, but earlier it says take the karma. So there's something that the Janam and the Maran is taking place in the Teta Karam. That's the Janam and the Maran. That's the Avada Jan. That's the Avagavan. That's taking place in the mind. Absolutely, absolutely clear, yeah. So from this verse we can know it is a process that happens during our lifetime. The Teta Karam doesn't happen before our present life or after our present life, if there's such a thing. Secondly, it's a process that happens in the mind, Karam. Now that's the first verse. It is absolutely, absolutely <coughs> clear that this is something that happens to us in this life. Now look at this verse. Yeah. Sada Satya Ratta Mara Nirval Avra Jan Rahai the earlier verse you had Avra Jan Rahe. Here is Avra Jan Rahai. Same thing. Avra Jan Rahe. Sam Bukhya. He has been eliminated. So, what does he mean? Sada Satya Ratta Mara Nirval Avra Jan Rahai is defined as Sada Satya Ratta Sadivi permanent. Such creator imbued permanently in the creator's virtues. Where? Mana. It's in the kara, it's in the mind. And then when that happens, the mind becomes nirbal. In other words, the mind is dilapidated of the vices. The mind is evacuated of the vices and the mind becomes nirbal. Without the impurities of the vices. So that is defined as Avra Jan Rahai. Now, spiritual death and spiritual birth is now being defined in the next verses. He says, Duche Pai Paramukhe Guthi Marmuk Bohi Jamkar. 
Chamakan's death. Now, in the very 1468 spiritualities, Jam is defined as the, you know, the soldiers of death. In Sikh spirituality, Jam is defined as the vices. The vices. So this is talking about spiritual death. Spiritual death happens when the vices take over our life. When we come out of the spirituality of the Ekapai, which is the creator, and then go into Dhuja, a spirituality that is anything other than the one singular creator driven. So that is spiritual death. Dhuja Pai, what happens is Parama Veguti. So Parama is duality. Param is where we are unsure of the one singular direction, one singular objective, one singular method, and we go into a second, a third, or a fourth, and a fifth. Param can be. So, what is defined here is spiritual death, John, is being defined in this verse. Spiritual death, Jamakal, is Dutya Pai Param Pegoti. Parvok Johi Jamakal. So that is defined as spiritual life. That's our. Our is kahe nanik son man mere tu sada sach samal. When you are in a permanent, sada means permanent, no more cyclic. Once you are in a permanent state of being imbued with the creator's virtues, the creator's existence, and the creator's love within. That is the situation, that is when the our jan cycle, the cyclic nature of our spirituality has been eliminated into permanence. So you see what's happened is that blue is actually the spiritual birth. Blue, Sukh, Saj, Anand, Bhutte, Death, Karp. That's spiritual birth. Now green is spiritual death. The second was here in green, Dujay Pai Parmavegunte. This is spiritual death. Once Dujay Pai, duality of our focus of spirituality dwells into us, that's when spiritual death happens. Parmavegunte. And then we go into all sorts of doubts. And Manamuk Mohi Javakal. Then what happens is the spirituality of the Shabda, which is Gorbuk, becomes anything other but becomes anything but the spirituality of the Shabbat and that is defined as the spirituality of the Self. That is Mohi Jamakal, that is spiritual death. And whatever is in white defines the termination of the cycle. The termination of the cycle of birth and death is spiritual life in identity. That's why the word Sada is used. Tum Sada Satya Samar. So, putting it all together in a condensed form, in a summarized form, this is what our jhan is. Our jhan is spiritual life and spiritual death. Spiritual life is on, on account of virtues, and spiritual death is on account of vices. The moment we are overcome by direction, instruction in a life which is dominated, controlled, directed by vices, then that's spiritual death. And when life is conducted on account of virtues, inculcating virtues, the creator's virtues, then that is spiritual life. So this is exactly what happens. This is the outward jhan. This is the cycle. Spiritual life, which is virtue dominated, transformed into spiritual death, which is wise dominated. So this constant interplay, cyclic interplay of you know, we are, we are spiritually alive and then we suffer spiritual death. That is what is the cycle of our jhan in Gorbat, in Gorbani, in, in Sikhi. That's exactly what it is. Now, the purpose is to end our jhan enter. That's the verse. That's the verse we are, we are, we are trying to understand. Uh, the first verse of body 41. Of said the ghost. So our jhan ended, the cycle being ended, or you can say the cycle being straightened out into a straight eternal path. 
Now that we find on page 524, Avad Janma the cycle is Janma is not born. Janma is not born. No spiritual. That's no spiritual life, the cyclic nature. So what we are looking for, Gurmukh uh, Piyayo, is a cycle turning into a straight path. You know, Bhokata Pantha Kenne. You know, Sikhida Mbarga Kenne. The spirituality of Shabad is not cyclic. It is supposed to be a straight path. And that is also exemplified in this verse on page 569. Sada Satchanatta Amar Nenbar Avar Jaan Rahai. So this is coming from the verses we looked at in the previous slide of Bhakti Okay, now we are going to come back to the first verse of body 41, which is Gormak Chukka Avan Jam. See, now it's so much easier to understand and so much clearer and so much value is being added to our spirituality because we have understood our Jam in the context of Gormak, in the context of Gurbani, and in the context of Sikhi. So the meaning is the spirituality of the Shabadam. That is Gormak. Chukka eliminates. What does it eliminate? Our jhan. What is our jhan? The cycle of spiritual life and death within me. The cycle of spiritual life and death that keeps on going in my mind. Death occurs. Now compare this with the translation if we had the coming and going in reincarnation I entered for the karma. It does not help. So I hope you are beginning to understand and appreciate the quest, the attempt to, to get to the messages, the inner messages, the original intent of Guru Nanak's verses, uh, not just in this body but everywhere else, yeah, so that we can add value to our spiritual journey. The second verse, Guru of 2041, is Guru Mukha Dharga Pave Man. The translation given to us is the Gormak is ordered in the court of the Lord. So we are still suffering from the same defect, critic number one, Gormak being mistranslated as a noun, the Gormak. And secondly, this thing about in the court of the Lord. Yeah? Now this is not a Gormak principle. Because when you say in the court of the Lord, you actually directly imply that the court of the Lord exists in certain places, certain locations, certain circumstances, certain conditions. Now that cannot be because the, the Lord, the Creator in Sikhi is not subject to location, occasion, circumstances or conditions. How can you have a Lord that is omnipresent, omnipotent, Har, Har Ramya Ram. If you have that kind of a Creator but somehow is caught, is only in certain locations, certain places and certain conditions, certain circumstances that doesn't make any sense. The court is always where the king presides. So if the king is everywhere, then the court is everywhere. So we are mistaken that the court somehow is not some kind of a, a, a courtroom or a building or whatever. A courtroom with four walls and a roof and all sorts of carpeting and all sorts of desks and benches, it's of zero value, there's no judge sitting there. It is the judge that makes the court. If on that day the judge wakes up on the wrong side of the bed and decides, I'm going to hold court under the Banyan tree that's outside the courthouse, then that is the court. The court is where the judge sits. So now we have a judge, a lord, the creator who's everywhere. So this principle is not a Gurmat principle of the court of law. That's why we have all sorts of funny, funny sakis about Guru you Nanak know, disappearing under a river and then suddenly appearing in a court of law, the court of God. Now that story does not withstand the principles of Gurmat, the principles of Zikhi, that the Lord does not have a specific location, location, a specific place where he where his courts, where his court you know, sits or is in session where we have to appear before them. Yeah. So let's look at the meanings of the words uh, in this verse. Gurmukh again the same with the Sihari from within the Guru's point. 
passages within the Shabbat in the ultimate analysis, Gurbot translates as spirituality of the Shabbat. Tarada, literally, of course, it means the court of judgment, but the Lord is within. Therefore, the court is within. The court is the one that makes the judgments and passes the judgments. So, that is the conscience within us. Whatever we say, whatever we do, and whatever we think is always judged within by the conscience. And the conscience is the Targa. The conscience is the Targa of the Creator because the Creator is the one that drives my conscience. The Creator is the one that drives my conscience and my life. Power is received and man is honor upon his dignity. So now we bring in the first verse, Now as a result of the cycle of spiritual life and that terminates. As a result of that, as a result of the elimination of the cycle of spiritual life and death, I am accorded honor before my conscience within. It is a conscience that is the court for our thoughts, for our actions, for our spiritual cycle of spiritual life and spiritual death. So when spiritual life happens, it is a conscience that is able, you know, to hold his head up in dignity. But when we transgress backwards from spiritual life into spiritual death, it is the conscience that suffers the indignity, the dishonor of our spiritual life. So that is why the elimination of the cycle of spiritual life and that accords us honor before our conscience which is within us. So the blue is the context from the previous verse of Ontario. So let's move on to the next verse. Kormaka Khote Khare Pachan translation given to us, the Gurmuk distinguishes the true uh, and the false. Okay, so the mistake is carrying on. Gurmuk is still being mistranslated as a noun, which is not the case in these verses. Now, distinguishing true and false, of course, needs context. Yeah. True and false of what? So, we want to try and understand the messages from the spiritual angle within the spiritual context. That's what matters. So we have to you know, go deeper and specify what is the meaning of Kote Kare. So let's first of all try and look at the meanings of each of these individual words. Gormak as usual again with the Sihari from the Guru's mind messages with the Shabdha translates as spirituality of the Shabdha. Kote is fake. Kare is genuine. Pachan is recognized or the distinguished. Now what we need to do is to is to get spiritual meanings of the word distinguished and to get spiritual meaning for the word fake and genuine. For that we would have to bring in context. And the context comes from the previous verse, and this is how this verse, Gorbak Kote Kare Pachan, now translates. The spirituality of the Shabda distinguishes fake honor. Because in the previous verse, the issue was Gurmukh, Darga, Pare, Maan, honor. So the honor can be fake or can be true. That's the issue here. Distinguishes fake honor from true honor. Where does that distinguishing happen? It happens within my conscience. So now it's, it's clear. It is useful and adds value to our spirituality. Gurmukha Kote Khare Pachan, the spirituality of the Shabda, Gurmukha Kote Khare, fake honor from true, Pachan distinguishes. The spirituality of the Shabda distinguishes fake honor from true honor of my conscience within. We will proceed now with the next verse, which is Gurmukha Lagya Sahaja Tehan. Translation provided, the Gormuk focuses his meditation on 
the celestial law. Again, Gurmukh is mistranslated, that is critique number one. And of course, as we move deep point, deep point to the verses, we begin to understand that the context of the previous verses is being ignored. In fact, the context of the entire body is being ignored. We are seen, we are made to understand, seemingly, that each of these verses is a standalone verse and it's just you know, to be translated in a vacuum for whatever we can make out of the words that are construed within this verse. Now that is never the case with Gurbani Gurmukhya. We have to be aware of the context. We have to be aware that the Guru is writing a narrative, a continuous narrative that started from verse 1 of this body and actually started from verse 1 of the entire second So that context has to be maintained in the back of our mind when we attempt to get to the original intent the true messages and the value-adding messages of uh, the verses. So let's look at the words one by one. Gurmuk, again, spirituality of the Shabbatha. Lagya literally is the joy, but in the spiritual sense, it becomes realized. Sahaj is intuitive. The opposite of Sahaj is when you have to force yourself to do something. Sahar is when something happens in an intuitive sense. In a layman's language, when something has become habitual. So, telling lies has become habitual. So, we can say we are intuitive liars. But speaking the truth, we have to make an effort. So, speaking the truth is hard. There's an effort involved. There's a difficult push of the point. Here at least I should speak the truth. But the whole idea is to become truthful in the sad sense. Now, that's the temporal story. So, in the spiritual sense, we want to become spiritual in the sad sense. Our spiritual journey should not be in the cyclic nature, the hour jump. So in that sense, in the spiritual sense, Guru Pyaryo Sahai is the negation of cycling. When something is no longer cycling, then it becomes Sahai. It becomes uh, intuitive or whatever other term you want to use for it. The Dhyan uh, is focused here. Yeah? So putting it all together, Guru Khanakya Sahaj Dhyan translates as the spirituality of the Shabda enables intuitive focus towards realization of the true honor of my conscience within. That's in blue. The true honor of my conscience within that comes the previous verse. So now you're going to ask me where's the cycle? If Sahaj is the negation of the cycle, where is the cycle? The cycle is here. The cycle is the true order and the fake order, which was in the, the verse previously just now. Kurbaka, Kote, Kare, So Kote, Kare is the cycle. Each time we attain order within, it is always a cycle of true order and fake order. What is true order? What is fake order? True order is spiritual order. Fake order is when we do spirituality for the sake of getting an honor in the eyes of the people the eyes of the external world. So the act is the same. The spiritual act is exactly the same. But the honor, the true honor is when it is before our own conscience. The fake honor is outside. Now I am reminded of a story of the 16th president of the United States of America, Abraham Lincoln, who used to, you know, be chauffeur driven to uh, the White House. So he was looking out of the window one day and he saw a, a piglet in the train. And he went down and he picked the piglet and he put it out. Now we're talking about true order and we're talking about fake order. And the guard asked him two questions. So two questions were asked. One is, you could have had me do this. I'm your chauffeur, I'm your driver, I'm your guard. See that's that indicates 
the answer to the first question of now I want the order in the presence, the court of my conscience with it. So once I want that, I cannot be asking you to, to do that for me. That's answer number one. Now even the order that's within my conscience can even can still be true or fake. Yeah. So now the second part comes in. Where the, the, the chauffeur makes a statement now to say that Mr. Lincoln President, sir, you have done a great honor, great assistance to this little piglet. You would have died. This is what Lincoln answered. Listen, I did no honor to no piglet. I did an honor to myself. There is no way I could have driven past without a guilty conscience. There's no way I could have sat in the White House and made any decisions with my mind being aware of a piglet being drowned in, the, in something that I had control over. There's no way I could sleep tonight. I have done it for my conscience. Now the reasons are all right. So this is true order in the presence of my conscience. A moral issue don't have to be a sick to know all these things. The second moral is those people who have never studied any of these verses and never studied verbal are being known to be showing higher levels of conscience. It's a tragedy that Sikhs have been blessed with body messages of a high level of conscience, but we Sikhs have today the disorder of displaying the highest level of corrupted conscience. A tragedy. You go everywhere in the Western world, in the educated world, you know the developed world and you see people acting on their conscience. Simple things like people holding a door for you and not just go through and slam it at the back. Simple things as people, people picking up stuff and putting it into a dustbin. Why are the beaches so clean? Why are their roads so clean? See they have a conscience. Why do they drive into a Massive traffic jam, but nobody hoots. Why do we drive here with no jam and keep our hand on the horn all the time? And Gurbani says, Gurbo Kalaka is ahead of the art. See? Something to ponder about, yeah? something to think about. People who make, make claim that, you know, we have Sikhi and therefore we are the, somehow the Khalsa, Akal Guruki Forge. You know, we are supposed to establish a kingdom of the Creator. Forget about the kingdom of the Creator, establish a kingdom of the conscience first. And that's within. Establish the kingdom of the conscience within myself first. Then I talk about establishing a kingdom outside there. Let me tell you one thing, Piyari. If everybody establishes the kingdom of the Creator within, nobody has to talk about a kingdom outside. That is established. That's the meaning of the Tohra Raj Karega Khalsa. But those claiming to want to establish the Raj of Khalsa have no Raj of Khalsa in their own conscience. How are we going to do that? Think about it. Let's come back to the verse. Kurma Khalaga Sahajityan. Spirituality of the Shabd enables it to be focused towards realization of the true order of my conscience within. The next verse is Gormakha Dharga Shafta Samai. Translation given in the court of the Lord, the Gormakha is absorbed in his praises. Okay, so lots of things we can find that need improvement on, on this uh, sort of a translation. Again, Gormakha is mistranslated as a noun. In the court of Lord, as we agreed just now, it's not a Gurmukh principle. And to say that we are going to be absorbed in his praises in the court, that is a bit problematic because we are not supposed to be you know, looking for praises and locations to be absorbed in the praises. The praises, if at all, this is the correct translation, the praises are going to be everywhere in every aspect of, of our life. Yeah? So let's try and look at uh, the words one by one. The same word, Gurmukh, in the Sihari running throughout his body from within the Guru's mind, messages within the Shabad and spirituality of the Shabad. Dharga the same word just now, literally God of judgment, but in a spiritual sense, in Gurmata sense, 
in the Sikhi sense, in the sense of the philosophy of Guru Nanak, it refers to the conscience within. Self refers to the praise of godly virtues. That's why it took internalized. So putting it all together, what we are here, this is the meaning. Kormaka Dharga Sif is why the spirituality of the Shabd enables the conscience within to internalize praise of godly virtues. Now this is critical, this is very important. There's a difference between narrating or vocalizing praises. That's fake order. That's just for talking purposes, that's just for discussing. Because if we are simply going to be doing nothing other than vocalizing, discussing and discussing, we are never going to get to the sad, to the intuitiveness. So that is why the praises, the virtues of the Creator have to be internalized. What do we mean by internalizing the praise of godly virtues? It means the conscience has consciously made a decision that the virtues of the Creator are good, are positive, and that I need them in my spiritual life. That is what is meant by internalization of the praises of the virtues. Before the virtues can be internalized, there has to be an interim judgment call that says these virtues are indeed worthy and that I need to internalize them. But that is what is meant by Gurmukha, Dharga, Sifta, Samai. So you cannot sort of short circuit this process of Sifta, the acceptance of the virtues, and just go ahead and say, I'm going to go and internalize the virtue. Then what's going to happen is, we are going to be attempting to doing something where the conscience and the mind have not yet come to terms with it. That's disaster. That's a recipe for, for disaster in the spiritual sense. And the final verse of 1441, the Bhagavad-Gaya, Nanaka, Napai, translation given to us, oh Nanak, the Gorbuk is not bound by bonds. Gorbuk is mistranslated and bound by bonds needs contacts. Now, if you cannot provide contacts, then it is uh, simply verbiage. You can't be bound by anything other than a bond. Once you have a bond, you're already bonded. So, either of these words would suffice, but then we still need spiritual meaning of, uh, of the word bandha as well as uh, nabai. So let's look at the words one by one, the same word word book, right all the way towards the end of this body book of Gary. Gurmukh translates as spirituality of the Shabda, but the entanglement. Now we have been programmed to believe all sorts of bandh. But when it comes to the entanglements in Sikh spirituality, philosophy of Gurmukh. Then we need to understand that when we talk about entanglement, we are basically talking about entanglement in voices. These are within the mind. So we get entangled. We want to do something positive, we get entangled in our ego or in our attachment or in our greed or in our self interest. Now, by literally not obtained, but since we are talking about entanglement, so now by is to be read in the context of bundle. So this is the negation of one, the negation of the entanglement. Therefore, it's translated as freedom from or emancipation from the entanglement. Nanak Gorbakapand Nafai translates as Nanak, the spirituality of the Shabda ensures my conscience is free of the entanglement of my vices. You see, the previous verse was the internalization within the conscience of the praises of the virtues of the Creator. So once that happens, then the conscience, the mind has made a conscious decision to adopt the virtues, to internalize the virtues and become the virtues. Now once that happens, then we are your freedom of entanglement of the vices happens. So why does it happen? Because the vices 
are within the mind and the decision to partake a life temporal or spiritual with within the parameters of vices is done by the mind, is made by the mind. It's the mind that decides. So once the mind decides that I'm now going to adopt virtues, then it's the entanglement happens almost as an automatic gesture. You can't have both residing within the mind at the same time in a parallel sense, then you have a cycle. You cannot have that. How man, which is a voice. How man, name, nal, we roll the hand. Why? How bad is the epitome of vices? All vices, never mind, they originate from, they are rooted in the ego. So, how bad that is we use in this verse as epitome, the root of vices within our mind. Now, virtues of the Creator. How bad, now bad, now we roll the hand, dome, now we say, take the time. They cannot coexist within the mind. We have to liberate ourselves from the vices. And what are the reasons why we haven't yet discovered, decided the need for a life of virtues? Is because we have not been able to make up a mind or the decision of wanting to abandon the vices. The need will not come until that stage is reached. Okay, so we will proceed with the now with body number 42. The first verse of body 42 is Gorbuk Nam Naranjan Pai. The translation given to us. The Gorbuk obtains the name of the Immaculate Lord. And uh, Again, Gurbuk is being mistranslated as a noun, the Sihari is being ignored. And noun is being translated or rather mistranslated as name. Noun is not named from the Sikh perspective, from the Gurbuk perspective. Noun refers to virtues. Noun refers to characteristics. Noun refers to attributes. Now refers to descriptions. Sometimes the context of now is the primary attribute. Satta so That's the primary attribute. The primary attribute is that he exists. So in that sense, now refers to existence. Satta Sometimes the word now is used to denote the root attribute. In the root attribute. So, the root attribute of the creator is basically hookah. Everything, you know, sort of originates from that. That's why Rudana comes as the primary question, the answer is in terms of hookah. Now, we can see the answer. So, now then, generally, it means characteristics definitions, attributes, adjectives, definitions, virtues of the creator, but specific senses when the attributes and the virtues are being specified within the verse, it can refer to Hukam and it can refer to the existence, the primary existence of the creator. Keep that in mind, context is very important, but in no circumstances does now translate as name because the Sikh spirituality at the very basic level accepts that the Creator really has no name and at the same time accepts that every name is acceptable in Sikh spirituality for the Creator. That's because we are the one who gave, who created these names of the Creator. We gave it, but we did not give the attributes, we did not give the virtues of the Creator that come from the Creator. As Pasha says in Jampani, Sab Tere and Ahiko. Gorbuk again, spirituality of the Shabada. Now, with awkward refers to virtues. Now, why is that awkward? It is actually what we call a dominative noun. So, now is the subject of Niranjana. 
So they occur under the Mahan, nominates the word Naam to Niranjan. Naam of what? Naam of whom? Of the Niranjan. That is what is meant by nominative Naam. A nominated Naam becomes the subject of the verse. So this is what is happening here. Neranjan comes from two words, Neranjan, in other words, without any kind of a blemish. And in sixth spirituality, that word is reserved for the creator. The creator is Neranjan. Anjan Pujabi de Vecha Kalak to Gandhya. Suit, blackness. Anjan Sorbet to be Gandhya. Anjan Kajal to be Gandhya. So that is. Uh, in the literal sense, in the dictionary sense. Yeah. So, without any blemish, that is the literal meaning of uh, Niranjan when it applies to spirituality. The Creator is blemishless, and we are full of blemishes, by literally to receive, but the spiritual sense to inculcate, because we are talking about virtues. Now, so, Gorbaka Naam, Niranjan Pai, translates as the spirituality of the Shabbat inculcates the virtues of the Creator. Gurmukha, spirituality of the Shabbat, Pai inculcates, what does it inculcate? Virtues, Naam. What kind of a Naam? Naam of Niranjan, virtues of the Creator. So the next verse is Gurmukha, how man Shabbat July. The translation given to us through the Shabbat, the Gorbuk burns away his ego, and this can be critiqued in the following way. Yeah? Number one, of course, Gorbuk is mistranslated as a noun, and secondly, the Sihari of the Shabbat is being ignored. If you look carefully, not only Gorbuk Kaka is a Sihari, Tadda of Shabbat also has a Sihari. So that is important because that will help us in attaining the true values of the world. So uh, let's look at uh, the words one by one. Yeah, Gorbuk is translated as from the Guru's mind messages within the Shabbat, spirituality of the Shabbat. How may is translated as Literally ego, but again, within the context of the previous words, yeah, the previous Gurmukha Naam Niranjan Pai. So now, here, Hopet will be understood as the root of human vices, and not purely in terms of ego, because then you could ask the previous verse was Naam, which refers to all the Creator's virtues. So now, if all the Creator's virtues are going to replace all of our vices, then the word Hobe here has to be interpreted in terms of the root of all of our vices. Otherwise, the question remains, what about the four other vices? Or take care of it, then what are we going to do? Alright, Shabbat Vita Sihari refers to the passages within the Shabbat. Remember, some time ago we talked about the container and the content. So, Shabbat with the Sihari refers to the content. Shabbat without the Sihari will refer, with an awkward, will refer to the container. Janai literally is burn away, but we are talking about vices, therefore, it is more appropriate to use the word enumerate. So, this is the meaning of the verse Gorbak Hobe Shabd Janai. The virtues of the Creator are inculcated in me through. So that's the previous verse. Kurbaka Naam Niranjan Pai. So the virtues of the Creator are inculcated in me through the spirituality of the Shabda, Kurbaka. Because the passages within the Shabda, Shabda with the Sihari, eliminate the root of my vices. How many? So I hope you can appreciate yeah, the depth of the messages of Guru Nanak. It is not simply to say that the Shabbat takes away my ego. Yes, it does. It does. You know, but here there is a context not in 
is a narration that is being narrated to us and we need to be cognizant of the entire narrative that is being uh, presented to us so that we can get to the true meanings, the real intent of the Nanak Pacha in this story. And the next verse is Gurmukha Sache Ke Kodagai. Translation, the Gurmukha sings the glorious praises of the true Lord. Okay, again, Gurmukha is mistranslated as a noun. Sache is mistranslated as true. We have discussed this previously. Sache, Sacha, Sata, when it comes in Gurbani, it always refers to the creator because the root of that word is a Sanskrit word. Satriya, which means in existence, in permanent existence, existing through eternity. That can only refer to the Creator. Truth, on the other hand, is a human construct. Truth is a relative construct. What we mean by relative thing is, it is one man's truth can be other man's fiction. A truth that operated in a certain period of time you know, may not be the truth in a different period of time. A truth in a certain location may not be the truth in a different location. So because of all those reasons, we determine that truth and falsity are basically human constructs in the, for use in the temporal lives that we lead. Gurbani does not concern itself with temporal matters. Gurbani's primary concern is spiritual matters. Spiritual matters, of course, do flow into temporal matters. It's just by saying a good man would be a good father, a good father would be a good husband, a good husband would be a good, you know, caretaker, a good provider, and so on and so forth. But the root of it is that you have to be first of all be a good human being. It applies to both agendas here. So it flows down. So being a good human being is the starting point of it. Everything flows from that. So therefore, in the spiritual sense, adopting and inculcating true and genuine spirituality is the prerequisite. Then that flows down into our temporal lives, you know. A spiritual man, a spiritual human being, well, of course, not one to tell a lie. Who not want to be inconsiderate? Who not want to be untruthful? Who would not want to be selfish? Who would not want to place his self interest? See, that's temporal. But the starting point is spirituality. So Sache is actually referring uh, to the Creator. And again, the whole context of the previous verse and the bodies is somehow missing from this translation. So look at the words, Gurbak, the same word, from within the Guru's mind, because it is a Sahari. Guru De Bok Vicho, Guru De Bok Ansar, Guru De Bok De Rahi. Spirituality of the Shabbat. Sache ke pertaining to the creator or of the creator. Gorgai literally means singing, singing the praises of the virtues, but we are of course talking about internalizing the virtues. So this is the meaning of the verse Gurmukha Sache ke Gorgai. The spirituality of the Shabd internalizes the virtues of the creator. So I want to bring to your attention the concept of Gorda Gauri. So, Goda Gaude, Kirtan Gauna, Jas Gauna, these are the terms we use in our spiritual discourse. Now, the literal sense Gaude translates as singing, but you know, we have an equation. Singing for what? Singing to understand. Understand for what? Understand to appreciate. Appreciate to know. To know, to realize. To realize, to accept. To accept, to believe to believe, to become. The whole equation, a whole flow chart that runs. So singing in the temporal sense is the starting point, which is the vocalization using music or whatever. You see, but if that's going to be spirituality, then, you know, it's like saying that to come to this class, I had to step out of my door, and all I need to do is to step out of my door and sit there. And I've already reached the class. I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. Huh? The whole flow chart, the whole process of getting here. So, in the end, when you make a statement that I'm going for class, 
Of course, you have to apart from your house. But that's not what it means. What it really means is ending up here. Critical and crucial, huh? we have to always understand the flow chart yeah, of the spiritual processes that Gurmat teaches us and Gurbani advocates for us in our spiritual action, spiritual deeds, spiritual thoughts, and spiritual processes. So the next verse, Gurmat Pyari Gurmat Sajja Rahay Samay. The translation is the Gurmat remains absorbed in the true Lord. And the critic is that Gurmat is mistranslated as a noun. And again, Sajja is mistranslated as true. And the context of the verses are missing. So let's look at the words. Gurmat, again, from within the Guru's mind. Spirituality of Shabad. Sajja. Sajja Da. Satda, it means connecting to the creator, pertaining to the creator of the creator. So to Satya again. Raha remains. So why if you? So the meaning of this verse, Kormaka Satya Raha Samai, the spirituality of the Shabd imbues the virtues of the creator within me. Let's move on to the next verse for Kampyaryo. Kormoka Saj Dham Pat Uttam Hoy. Note that the word Saj has a Sihari, the word Dham has a Sihari, the word Pat has a Sihari. None of the Siharis are meant for pronunciation. The Siharis are all meant to provide us with the intended meanings, the intended messages. Let's look at the critique first. Gurmak is mistranslated as a noun again, such mistranslated as true in the literal sense, a noun again mistranslated as name. So, look at the words Gurmak, from within the Guru's mind, messages within the Shabad, spirituality of the Shabad, Saj with the Sihari pertaining to the Creator. Sajjade nal talag rakhana, Saj. Naam with the Sihari <coughs> through the virtues. If Naam was with the Naam word, it would be virtues of Naam Niranjan. That Naam there had a Naam word. But this Naam has a Sihari through the virtues. Pat is dignity, Uttam is exalted. And hoe becomes or is. Because Tata has a Sihari for Pat, so it is a situation of being exalted. Ichate Vecha, Ichate Rani, Ichate Nawad. That is why Pat has a Sihari. So we put it all together now. Korbok Saj Na Pat Uta Hoi. The spirituality of the Shant exalts by spiritual dignity. Through by becoming the virtues of the Creator. So let's proceed to the final verse of body 42, verse of Karyo, Nanaka, Kormaka, Sagana Pavarki, Sochi, Hoe. Nanaka does not have an anchor, so we need to pause over there. Nanak Kormaka. If the Kaka had an anchor, then it would be a nominator. That is, Nanak would be saying that I am the Gurmak. Nanak would become the subject of Gurmak. That is absolutely not something that the Guru wants to do, that the Guru wants to tell us. So, the verse is to be read as Nanak. Gurmak Sagal Pavaniki Soji Hoi. The translation given to us Nanak, the Gurmak understands all the words. So the critic against the same Gurmak is mistranslated as a noun. Secondly, Sagal Pavan is all the words. At best, it's a literal translation. And anyway, understanding the words is not a spiritual endeavor of Gurmak. It's not something that we want to do, not something that the body Gurmak, Gurdanak in these verses or elsewhere, is encouraging or advocating that we do that. So let's look at the words one by one. Gurmukh with the Sihari spirituality of the Shabd. Sagal entire power in the cosmos. Sagal power 
the first deity of the creation. But because the cortex of each verses of this body is such, we are not actually talking about the entirety of the creation, but we are talking about the presence of the creator in the entirety of the creation. So when we use the word Sagal power, Ki Soji, because we are not interested in understanding the entirety of the cosmos, we are not interested in understanding the entirety of creation. What we are interested in understanding is the opening presence of the creator in the entirety of creation. So Soji, that's the awareness that we desire. Hoi, become a create Generally. So we put this all together with Mukhyaru, this is the meaning of the word. Nanak, Gorvaka Sagal Pavadaki Sochi Hoi translates as Nanak. The spirituality of the Shabad generates awareness of the omnipresence of the Creator in the entirety of His creation. So now we will proceed to 40, 43 of Mukhyaru. 4043 is the beginning of the ball of the spiritual discourse we put squarely back in the court of the sins. So now after hearing all the verses about the spirituality of the Shabbat, now the sins are beginning to ask of Guru Nanak certain very deep spiritual questions. So it begins with this verse. Kavana Bhul, Kavana Matavera. The translation given to us, what is the root, the source of it all? Kavana Bhul. Kavana Matavera is being translated, translated as, what teachings hold for these times? The critic is, now the question is being directed at Gunanak by the sins. They are asking about Guru Nanak's spirituality. I have underlined that word spirituality. Now if you read the translation, what is the root, the source of all? Is that about spirituality? We are not getting that message. We are not getting that, that intended messages. We are not getting, you know, the hand, the feel of the discourse that has been going on all along. In other words, you know, we are not in the situation. We haven't brought our boy into the situation. If we are going to say a common mold means what is the root, what is the source. So this is not being reflected. It's like sometimes when somebody is you know, telling you something, he says, are you here? Are you with me? So by translating what is the root, what is the source, it looks like we are not with the discourse. We are not with what Guru Nanak has been saying all along. So we have to bring that into this question. And remember, this is body uh, number 43. I mean, at body 43, are we still talking about you know, the temporal stuff? What is the rule? What is the source? No, we have come very deep down into spirituality already. So that has to be reflected, the depth of it. So we need to ask the question, are we, are we with the discourse, are we with Guru Nanak, are we with the sense of this man? Are we here? The other thing about these verses now, the next, the entire whole body is very, very concise, very precise. So you just cover wool, cover much better. So we have to bring in lots and lots of contacts from this body, from the previous bodies huh, into the, the whole discussion, the whole discourse has to be contextualized uh, to understand the real intent of Guru Nanak putting down these questions uh, in Sadhu Ghost. Kavanam, of course, means what? Who is the source? Now, Mat with the Sihari, it means within the mind. So, what is what is within the mind? Now, this is where the context comes. Huh? So, in other words, they are asking for the source of Guru Nanak's beliefs. What Guru Nanak has been sharing with them all along, you know, for the past seven, eight bodies, the Gurmuk bodies in particular, is Guru Nanak's beliefs pertaining to spirituality. 
to be asking for the source of it. So that is Bhattva. Now, Veda literally means time, you know. But if you look at the context of it, we are talking about spiritual time. This entire context is spiritual. So spiritual time really means our spiritual life. Because the entirety of time that we have to live a life is, all, is supposed to be or to be devoted towards spirituality. So Veda refers to our life. Hora Veda, I don't know. Your mother tells you in English, now is the time to study. She is not talking about 8 o'clock, right? She is not talking about today. What is she really talking about? She is saying, this life, this part of your life, this is the portion of your life in which you must study, otherwise the rest of your life will be wasted. In the Pujapi we say, Hora Veda, eh? and then we say, Veda Khoj Na Jai. And Jay Veda Khojagya, we are talking about time, we are talking about the day, the month, we are talking about that part of life. Certain parts of life are meant for certain things. So that is how Veda is to be understood. We are in the deepest context of spirituality. It is about our spiritual life. So cover the bowl, cover the mud, Veda is simply not what is the rule, what is the source. Cover the moon, cover the path, Veda. What is the source of your spiritual life and your spiritual beliefs? Doesn't this all now bring us into the discourse? There's a discourse going on. A whole lot has been said, a whole lot has been discussed, a whole lot has been explained, and now the question will relate to that whole lot. And what was the whole lot? The whole lot was about Gunanak's spiritual life. The whole lot was about the whole lot of Gunanak's spiritual beliefs. So as well, I will look at you. This is the question. Kavan Bhul, Kavan Bhat Vela Vela. What is the source of all that you said? What is the source of all that you are? What is the source of your existence? What is the source of your spiritual life as you have setting right before us? And so on. And then, the next question, Tera Kavana Guru Jesukat Ichena. And the translation is, who is your Guru? Whose disciple are you? You are going to ask this question at body 43. I thought that was the first words of body number one. You know, you go through a, a tremendously deep spiritual discourse all along, and then coming at this, you know, this is almost beyond victory already. Now you want to ask who's your guru, who's your disciple. Remember, keep in mind, Kavana Bhul, Kavana Mantha Veda, then follows in the next verse. Kavan Bhul, Kavan Mat Veda, what is the source of your spiritual life and beliefs? So let's look at the words one by one. Tera, of course, you know. who or what? Guru refers to enlightened one. Because the previous verse was Kavan Bhul, Kavan Mat Veda, what is the source of your beliefs, of your spiritual life? Jessica, who's, when? Chela literally is a follower. But nobody here is talking about a guru and a follower in that sense. No, it's not the physical sense. So in the spiritual sense, Chela is some is an adherent. So the meaning of Tera covered Guru Jeska to Chela, what is the source of your enlightened one? Tera covered Guru. What is the source of your enlightenment that you adhere to? Jeskatu Chela. Now you will appreciate why this is considered this way when you look at the next two verses. 
Because the next two verses will make it clear that the Guru and the Chela are within the same physical entity. The Guru and Chela are within the same mind. So it cannot be two different entities. They are not asking to Nanak in the physical sense, who is your physical Guru and whose physical Chela are you? Now the next verse is, Kavan Katha Le Raho Erande. The translation is, what is that speech by which you remain unattached? The critic is that Katha as speech is literal. The Rale is unattached again is literal. So, but what is that speech by which you remain unattached? I don't, I don't understand how anybody could remain unattached to speech. And so we have to go a deeper into the words. Covered again what happens? Katha is discourse. Le is to adopt. Raho literally to stay. But it's in the second person, huh? Raho, because Later on, you have another word down in the same body where the Raho will be spelled differently in the first person. So keep this in mind. Yeah? This is second person. So it's covered Katha, lay, what is called, yeah? adopted, kept, unique. So we put it all together. Covered Katha, lay, Raho, Rale, what is the source of your unique discourse? Then the Rana is referred to the Katha. Okay, the next verse. Bola Nanak Suno Tomba Pali. Let's learn to read this verse properly. You know, Bola Nanak Suno Tomba Pali. Because Nanak has conquered. So, therefore, that is dominating to. Sunotum. Ola Nanak Sunotum Bali. The translation given to us is listen to what we say, O Nanak, you little boy. Virtually okay. everything about this translation is mistranslated here. Yeah? So let's start with the first thing. If you translate Bolle as listen to what we say, first of all, that's literal. Let me ask you the question. Who is the one that's doing the listening here? Listen to what we say. Wow. Who not have came there to listen to them? Are they imposing their listening on to them? Who is doing the listening here? The self. So it cannot be listened to what we say. We listen. If we say, we listen. So this translation is totally up on its head, totally upside down. <laughs> now the previous words actually they are asking the question. Yeah, exactly. So they ask question they are They ask the question and they are not telling anything. They ask the question, therefore they are doing the listening. They are the ones who are acquiring the knowledge. So you are absolutely right. They, they, Sensibility of this translation is problematic. You have people asking a question and then saying, Listen to me. No, I asked a question, so I listen to you. No? And to say, Bale as you little boy, little, the sets couldn't in their right sense of mind. The slightest amount of understanding that they had, understand all Guru Nanak say and then address Guru Nanak as a little boy. How can you address somebody as a little boy and then expect wisdom from him at the same time? So, listen to what we say is negated in the entire body. The sense are the one doing the listening. So this really needs a massive overhaul. Yeah? Bolle literally to speak but discourse. Nanak, because it is Nankar, so Nanak is addressed. Nanak is being addressed. 
listening to you, Soro Topa, Tendu Sordeya, it is literal Japanese translation. Bale, literally child, but of course we talk about spirituality. So Balak refers to an unenlightened state, Niyana and Siyana. Niyana, Balak, unenlightened, Siyana, enlightened. So, Bole, Isko Aso Namak, Sano Tom, we are listening to you, who? Bale. This cross or Nanak be an unenlightened are listening to you. Submission. This is submission. Actually, the, the feeling of submission by the sense to Guru Nanak is already been found from the first verse of this morning. When you ask Guru Nanak, Kavana Buddha, Kavana Matta Veda, when you ask Guru Nanak, come on Guru, Jeska to Cheta, what is the source of your spirituality? What is the origin of your spiritual life? What is the source of your enlightenment? When you ask all these questions, you have already submitted. That is why the word Bali comes in here. They are referring to themselves. Everywhere the translation in all the tikas is that they are referring to Bale, referring to Gunanak as a Balak. It may well be that Gunanak went to them at a young age. It may well be that they were relatively very, very much older to Gunanak. It may well be, but let me tell you, at 4042, if the issue is still physical age and physical stuff, then we have an understood anything. It is not about physical. So it's Bola speak. That's a request of submission. Discourse, O Nanak. Speak. Sarotam, we are listening to you. Because we are the unenlightened. The next verse is Kathaka De Vichar. So give us your opinion on what we have said. No, 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 no. <laughs> give us your opinion on what we ask. So critic is Isha Katha as what we have said, of course, is literal. Vichar as opinion is literal. So we have to look at this word in context. Very, very critical. But of course, it contradicts the previous. Well, that's the fourth critic. Listen to what we say, oh Nanaki little boy. They were telling Gurudana to listen. But here they are asking for his opinion. So who is doing the real listening? Who is supposed to do the listening? So let's look at the word. Is this particular very, very contextual, very, very concise, every word you know has got meaning. Katha ka better subject they seek. This course, which are is Kathaga De Vichar, the unenlightened secret discourse on this particular subject, is Kathaga. So, this is the subject. Pavajal Shabda Nagavan Haar. Shabda Nita Sihari. Isn't that what Gunanak has been saying all along? In you know, the countless bodies that came before this body. But the translation given to us is how can the Shabd carry us across the terrifying world, ocean critic, powerless ocean, of course, literal translation. Sihari of the word Shabd is ignored. Once this is ignored, I think the whole translation uh, literally, literally becomes a buyer. Powjal means spiritual life. This is a this cause of spirituality. Pavajal, spiritual life, embedded in the word Pavajal, power, fear, Jal ocean, fearful ocean. Embedded in the word Pavajal, when translated to spirituality, is intricate, difficult, complicating, treacherous spirituality. That's the Pavajalness of it. 
So it's about spiritual life. Shabbat Vidyasyari, messages from within the Shabbat, let the Avad Har, literally ability to cross over, but again this is a metaphor. So what it means in spiritual context is the ability to reach one's spiritual destination. What is the pavajalness of our spirituality? The pavajalness of our spirituality is we keep doing, doing and doing but we never seem to be reaching our object. We never seem to be reaching our destination. That is the Pabjalas that we are asking Guru to explain. So the previous was Es Kathaka De Vichar the unenlightened seek discourse on this particular subject. So this particular subject will become the context of the next verse. The subject that we seek discourse on is Katha, that one, is that messages within the Shabbat enable us to achieve the goals of a spiritual life. Because this is what you said. This is what you told us. So this is what we want explanation of. This is what we want the discourse on. How exactly? are the messages within the Shabbat operating to enable us to achieve the goals of a spiritual life. So now Guru Nanak must answer the question of how. Yeah? The next body must deal with the question of how. How does the Shabbat enable us to achieve the goals of our spiritual life? So for that purpose, we will move on to body 44. So, body 44 is going to deal with the answers of the questions that are raised in body 43. The question was Kavana Mood Kavana Matavera. Now, this is the answer Kavana Rabba Satapur Matavera. The translation is from the air came the beginning. See? Can you imagine the ridiculousness? We were waiting for some spiritual answer to come by. And now the question was Is Kathaka De Vichara Pavir Shabdal and Avanahar? That was the question, and the answer is there is the beginning. One heck of an enlightenment, huh? Very nice. This is the age of the true Guru's teachings. So, the critic is common as a little age of the true Guru's teachings. Again, must realize that the age. So, in other words, if we accept this, then there's an age for Gorbat. So, that means Gorbat will be here today and perhaps, you know, God knows when. Certain age he will not be there anymore. But that's not what it is. Gorbat is a spirituality relating to the Creator. It is not denominational. It is not religious. It is for everybody, the entirety of mankind. So therefore it will remain. It's eternity. So we cannot put a religion maybe of a certain age. A certain age may be suitable for a certain religion. That's fine. We are not about religion. We are talking about spirituality. Body, the entirety of Guru Granth Sahib is spiritual. So come back to this verse here. Yeah? The context of question in the previous body is ignored. So let's look at the words one by one and then we bring back the verse, the question verse, and then we see whether we can coincide by self get an answer. Power literally means air, but it means the source. Because the question was pertaining to the source. So it's a metaphor. Power is considered the source of life and the source of sustenance in your body. It's a metaphor. Power to Guru. But then you have another verse that says, Guru Ben Kaur and the heart. Without the Guru, what we have is unenlightenment. So, what is the source of our enlightenment? Power to Guru. Power to there means the source. Because it says, Guru Ben Kaur and the Without the Guru, there is ultimate ignorance. 
Therefore, the Guru is the power of our spiritual life. The Guru is the air of our spiritual life. The Guru is the breath, power the Guru. Around the beginning, Satgur, creator connecting Guru. Satgata Vidasyari refers to creator, Guru, Guru, enlightened one. So it's a creator connecting enlightened one. In simpler terms, we create a connecting messages. Creator connecting enlightened one, that is Satgur. But with the Siari again within the mind beliefs. The same way we translated in the previous body. We lost life, spiritual life. The entirety of spiritual life. So the question was covered a bull, covered a path veda. What is the source of your spiritual life? The answer is the source of my spiritual life and belief is creator, connecting, and vital one. The question was covered a bull, covered a veda. The answer is Bhavan Arambha Sadhguru Mata Vela. The question was, what is the source? The answer is, the source is enlightenment. Is it making sense, Varma Pyari? Is it adding value to our spirituality? I understand you might create the practice. Any enlightenment that, that links us to the Creator, but that has to be qualified. We are not interested in the entirety of the Creator, we are interested in a facet, one facet of the Creator which Guru Nanak has presented to us. The Creator has too many facets for the human mind or anybody for that matter to be encapsulated, to be discussing. So what the Guru, Guru have done, what Guru Nanak has done, he said for practical spirituality, for practical humanity and for us to actually bring spirituality into our spiritual life and practice it on a daily basis and live it and become it, you need to pay attention to one particular facet of the Creator, which is the Creator's virtues. So our spirituality is entirely virtue driven, virtue acquisition, Virtue practice and becoming the virtue. There are other facets. The facet of the creator, creator has power. But our spirituality is not to acquire that power, not to understand that power. The creator is a creator, so he has got creation ability. That's not the focus of, of our spirituality. Our focus is virtues. So the enlightenment that brings about an awareness about the creator's virtues is actually connecting us to the Creator, but the one facet of that Creator that could not have stopped us. Haji. <coughs> you mentioned power, so uh, we feel that uh, uh, the saints were also interested in that facet of... Uh... No, the only interest we have in the Creator's power is that the Creator's power is unfathomable, is unknowable, is immeasurable, and therefore it cannot be brought into a practical spiritual life. So once you want to bring power of the Creator, ability, strength of the Creator into our spiritual life, then we got to begin by understanding the power. And then Pasha says in Bali, Antuko Chahan Jogai, those who wanted to understand and Chahan. Antuko, who wanted to understand the entirety of the Creator's power. What happened to them? Antuko chahan jogai seai antagavai What do you think The illustration given is a rock of salt deciding that I am going to understand the entire depths and breadth of the ocean. So it says, alright, step one, journey beginning. And the rock of salt dives into the ocean and starts to explore. Antuko chahan jogai. Say I, Antagavai. That's about all. But when it comes to virtues, when it comes to God, it doesn't just say that the God are beyond and beyond everything. 
Koruko chahad joga is so high, go to the mind, does it exist? No. So we have to bring that aspect of virtues into our practical spirituality. But that's the missing element in our understanding of the Creator. So we Sikhs haven't really gotten down to understand you know, the Creator from Nanak's point of view, the Sikh point of view, from Gurbat point of view. So maybe what you want to do to help yourself, you put a bracket there and specify what is meant by Creator connecting. It is basically, it is about virtue connecting. What facet of the Creator that is relevant in our practical spirituality and our practical humanity. So once we begin to appreciate, understand this facet value, then spirituality becomes practical, becomes achievable, becomes doable. Of course, our problem is uh, we keep asking if you are a key. We are, we are stuck in that doable part because no one tells us what is the doability of it. Now, virtues have an inbuilt doability in it. Once you mention a virtue, any virtue, virtue, courage, kindness, whatever the virtue is, the mere mention has an embedded doability in it, but the doability has a choice. We can do it or we cannot do it, some of us. But if you start painting God in all this, you know, He is the Father of Heavens. God the Father. God, the owner of seven heavens, this and that. You know. Then, what is the doability of that? The doability you know, becomes somewhere in the distance. And that's where we all get stuck. So, this is an important thank you. I, I appreciate that you asked that question. All right. Shabda Guru, Sortata Hachena. The answer is the Shabd is the Guru upon whom I lovingly focus my consciousness. I am the Chela, the disciple. So, critic is that the anchor of the word Shabd is being ignored here. Very, very critical. Because the anchor is a nominative. Shabd is the essence of Guru. Shabd is the subject of Guru. So, it is not. Shabbat as Guru, but a certain element of the Shabbat that dominates the Guru. That's what we are interested in. The Shahid, the word Sort and Thorn again ignored. So let's uh, try and look at the words one by one. Shabbat is an awkward dominated now. Guru enlightened part. Sort source. So the command instruction, Chela, the adherent, the one that adheres to the instruction. So literally is the sound, the command, but we are talking about the instruction, the instruction that is within the Shabbat. So we put it all together. The question was, previous body verse 2, the question was, Tera Kavan Guru, Jiska to Chela, and the answer is Shabd Guru, Sorta to Chela. The question was, what is the source of your enlightenment that you adhere to? The answer is, the source of enlightenment is the Shabd. I adhere to the instruction within. The question was, Kera Kavad Guru Jeska to Chena, the answer is Shabd Guru Sort to Chena. Translated as the source of my Latin was the Sort. That's the source of my Latin one is the Shabd. That's why Shabd is an occur dominated to Guru. The enlightened one. So, the chela means I adhere to the instruction within. You can put it literally to say that I am the chela of the instruction of the shabbat. I am the chela and the follower <coughs> of the messages of the shabbat. That is literal. 
So you see now, from this verse you know that the Guru and the Chela are not two distinct and separate entities. They are physical, they are within the one entity, within the one mind, within the one spiritual mind. The Guru is the source of enlightenment, which is the Shabad. And the Chela, the adherence, is also within the same entity, the same mind. Akatha Katha, the next was Akatha Katha De Raho Nerada. Translation given to us speaking the unspoken speech, I remain unattached. So Akatha Katha is unspoken speech, is literal. So this is where the doability comes in. Yeah? If this is the translation, speaking the unspoken speech, everybody asks, so how do I do this? See? Then Nobody can answer the question. Some people will take you on a whole spin. The unspoken speech is the unspoken speech of the spoken speech, which means the spoken speech is unspoken, the unspoken is spoken. Ode sore all sorcery See, and if you ever give me any signal that you don't understand this, then you are the stupid one, you know. So you will not want to be stupid. You won't put up your hand and say, so you won't say that. You won't have the courage to say that. So I think Jinna Gapa the Jinni Kahari Shraya Jadina. Oh, but if you say which part you speak the Karakarki, the basis of that is that the listeners never have the courage to admit that they don't know. That's a very Pajapi disease, it's a very sick disease. I stand before a non sick audience. The moment I say something, what, 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 what do you say? What's the meaning of that? Can you explain that? Can you go back and clarify? You cannot go forward until you are able to make yourself clear. And the reason why we can't make things clear because we don't have the clarity within our own selves. Akatha, Katha, and of course the context of the body is ignored. Yeah? So let's look at the word. Akatha. But something is beyond this cause, it refers to the Creator. Everything about the Creator, every facet of the Creator is actually beyond this cause. Katha is this cause. They is to adopt Rahova. Just now was spelled differently here. Yeah? That was second person. They were talking to Kunarak. Now Kunarak is giving the answer. So Raho, he is talking about himself, first person, kept. Nirala unique. Okay? So the question was, previous body verse 3, Kavana Katha De Raho Nirali. That was Raho. What is the source of your unique discourse? Literally, what keeps you, Raho, what keeps you in your unique discourse method? Kavana Katha De Raho Nirali, what is the source of your unique discourse? The answer is, I adopt the creator as the source of my unique discourse. So my discourse is unique because it is about the creator. It is creator connecting. It relates to the creator. That's my uniqueness. And I have absolutely no other uniqueness. Isn't this global? Isn't this uniqueness applicable to us? So once we understand that the uniqueness of Sikhi is creator, connector, creator, related. The discourse of Sikhi is unique because it's creator, connector, creator, related. We will be able to adopt this in our spiritual life to say that the doability of it is that my spiritual life, my spiritual deeds, spiritual thoughts, spiritual discourse is going to be creator, connector. Then we are able to do and to find a solution. The next uh, verse of this body, Nanaka, Joka Joka Burgopana. The translation was Nanaka through the ages, the Lord of the world is my Guru. Lord of the world is limiting the Creator to our world. I hope you understand by now that the Creator is not just the Lord of the world, He is the Lord of everything. 
for the entirety of creation. So somehow or other the word Bhopala is not being translated. Maybe it's an omission or maybe it doesn't fit to the translation. Yeah? So Jogjoga actually refers to the entirety of period. It finites. So when the word Joga is repeated in Purbani, Hara Joga Joga Pagata Upaya. It doesn't mean two Joga, it doesn't mean four, it doesn't mean six, it doesn't mean ten. Joga Joga means infinity from start to end. Gora refers to the essence. Kopala, Sustainer, Creator. In the Sustainer form, Nanak, Joga Joga Gora Kopala, the uh, Meaning of this was Nanak, the creator, eternal essence of my spiritual. So I am never ever going to step out of the parameters of the path of the creator. Creator means here, creator, related, creator, connected, creator produced virtues. My entire spirituality is based on that. Ek Shabada, next verse, Ek Shabada Jet Katha Vichari. The translation is I contemplate the sermon of the Shabada, the word of the one God. The sermon of the Shabada is not a permanent principle. Shabada is not meant for sermonizing, even though that is what we have reduced the Shabada to. Shabbat in the ultimate is meant for internalizing. So at this point in the body, Nanak would not be talking about, you know, other than internalizing. The word of the one God, I think this is really needs a lot of explaining. Let's come to our understanding of the words. Ek in the Naukar refers to the one singular creator. Shabbat with the Naukar is a nominative to the gentle pertaining to gender of katha discourse narration vichari is discoursed so just now the issue was Nanak Jorjoko Gurgopala the eternal essence of my spirituality this is being explained in this verse ek shabajit katha vichari means the eternal essence of my spirituality is the discourse pertaining to the one creator that is narrated within the Shabbat. You see, in everything and anything Gunaraj is saying, he is always trying to bring them back into the crux of the matter. And the crux of the matter is the creator, and the crux of the creator is the messages within the Shabbat. That's the entire house of spirituality of Sikhi. That's the foundation, that's the base of Gurdanak's spiritual. And the final verse of 1444, The Gorbak puts out the fire of egotism. Betty Gorbak is mistranslated, putting out the fire of egotism. Basically, this is a very literal translation. Gorbak Hobay Agatrevari, Gorbak again with Shahari or within the Guru's mind, spirituality of the Shabbat. Hobay literally ego, but again we are talking about the fruit of our vices. Agatrevari is literally to burn away, but in the spiritual sense we are talking about liberating, and even in the more specific sense, find out that we are talking about elimination replacement. It is about eliminating replacing. Eliminating through the process of replacement. That is doable. Burning a fire is not doable. Alright. The question, critical question, were in the final couplet, is Kathaka Dev Vichar? The unenlightened seek discourse on this particular sh subject. What is the subject? Pautal Shabdanada Abadaha. That messages within the Shabbat enable us to achieve the goals of our spiritual life. 
So tell us exactly how the messages within the Shabbat enable us to achieve our goals in spiritual life. The answer of Guru Nanak is that the spirituality of the Shabbat eliminates the root of my vices. Once the root of my vices is eliminated, then what happens is that the remaining vices start to crumble. But the elimination in context is through the replacement of the roots by virtues of the Creator. This is true about it. This is practical spirituality. So the root of our vices, which is ego, is I. The root of our vices, ego, is simply going to be flipped over in you. So I becoming you. So you means the centrality of our life now is no longer I. When I had I, the centrality, the focus, the root, the entire interest of my life was focused on I. Now, because I have read, understood, acquired, believed, accepted, internalized the messages within the Shabbat, Gorbak, the Shabbat that comes out from within the depths of spirituality of Guru because I have done that, now, the centrality of my spiritual life is no longer centered, focused, and pivoted on I, but on the Creator. Now, everything that I think of, that I do, that I practice, is going to be in terms of the Creator. So, when I see this material, I do not think of it in how it's going to be now to me now. A simple thing that you walk in an orchard and you see a beautiful rose, all right, on a long stem. Now when life is centered on I, all that comes out of me is to twist it, break it and take it. You see, a simple thing is going to turn this the other way around. Now, because the centrality of my life is no longer centered on I, the focus no longer on the Creator, the when I see the rose, I'm supposed to say, beauty of the Creator. Such a beautiful flower, such fantastic fragrance, created by the Creator for creation. I am just part of it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to admire it, enjoy the fragrance, to walk away, leave it behind, to let it live, so that the fragrance and beauty of the creation can grow, so that the rest of creation can enjoy it. Anji. Well, most of the time is set on the thorns. Right? You see, when you start to Think about I, when the centrality of life is I, then all I see is the rose. I don't see the leaves, I don't see the thorns, I don't see the roots. I don't see nothing, I don't see the plot. All I see is a rose which I'm going to pluck and take it back. So one part of it where the centrality of my life turns from I to you. As Pantra uh, Das says, Jab hum hote I, so long the central centrality of my life was centered on I, you didn't exist. And the Shabda told me to flip it. Jab hum hote tab tu nahi, ab tu hi So the first thing that, that, that gets out of my mind is that that rose is for everybody. The second thing that comes to my mind is that it is not just a rose. So not more to it. Then I see the thorn. I see the leaf. Without the leaf, there can be no rose. Without the thorn, there can be no rose either. Creation works in 
and diety. You take away one aspect of creator, you are disturbing the entire cycle of creation. And then you become responsible. And we take away certain parts of creation based on our greed. So all I'm going to do is cut off all the roses and take them away and leave the leaves and the thorns behind. See, so if I keep, we keep doing that, all right, then the totality of creation, once it's affected, all this change, yeah, the food chain, the existence chain, will all be disrupted. That disruption is caused by my greed, by my ego, by my desire to take things that I think belong to me because the centrality of life is I. So then the thorns will not look as thorns anymore. The thorns will start to appear as contributors to the beauty of the rose, to the existence of the rose. There can be no beauty if there was no ugliness side by side. There can be no softness, the gentleness of the petals of the rose are contrasted by creator in his entirety by putting a thorn right next to it. It takes a creator-centric mind to see that and appreciate more. Thank you very much, Mario, for listening, for your kind attention. Rajke Sare Fadi Balao, Bhai Guruji Ka Khansa, Bhai Guruji Ki Fadi.